Hello, my friends, DIY Spy Dar. This is the Unique Antique Challenge number three, French Provencial Floral, sponsored by the Crafty Creech. Now, this was as close as I could find to French Provencial. It does have scallops on it, but this is probably a 1980s solid oak octagon table with a glass tabletop and it's in pretty bad shape on the surface. There is some sun damage and there is water damage. And whenever I get to a table that has a glass top, I just think you should be able to look through the top down to the bottom and see some friendly little koi fish swimming in their pond. I just can't help it. All right, I'm gonna clean it with my scrub and bubbles, give it a good clean and a good rinse Please don't laugh at my tick wear. Um, this isn't always fail proof. The other day I sat down and felt something up on my neckline. Well, it traveled across all my clothes and was up on my hairline. Ticks are awful here. So once I get this washed, we will go from there. P80 screen for my surf prep on high. I need to get this surface down to see what I've got here. See if I can get the scratches and gouges and anything out because I'm just gonna scuff sand this because I do wanna paint it. The bottom here, um, if you ever notice that your sander is doing something like this and you have it hooked up to a vacuum system, well, number one, did you turn your vacuum on? Number two, do you need to empty your vacuum? Well, I needed to empty my vacuum, but I kind of just ignored it for a while until I had to go empty my vacuum. This is what it should look like. Um, this is a, a 100 grit flat at high speed. Just trying to get this surface off and get any raised areas back down. Now, since this was gonna be my canvas, I really needed this to be flat and no lines in it. So I had to get out the Gorilla compound here. Okay, time to prime, and I'm using Boss. It did have a little bit of an odor, and always uh, strain your paint if you're gonna spray. It's a little bit dark where I'm at because the sun was just blazing, and it was so hot outside. Always check your sprayer, like on a piece of cardboard, and make sure it's spraying good. Now, I kind of messed up here. I forgot to put a piece in my sprayer. And I went ahead and sprayed uh, my whole piece with the primer with a nice heavy coat with that piece <laughs> missing. So um, I thought something was wrong. It wasn't going quite well, but it was well enough. Now I'm back to the bottom and since this is gonna be my canvas, I have some acrylic gesso. And this is used when you're going to, when you're going to paint a, a picture and you want to prime that canvas so it's nice and white and it has some grip for your paint. This was really thick, really thick. I could stand the stick up in it. So I knew that I was going to have to use some water to help spread this out. So I wet that brush and I did have to spray uh, just to get this to go in a nice layer. Well, 
when I got done with the section, I just made sure all my brush strokes were going the same direction. I found the center, and now I have a number two click pencil, and I am gonna start to draw my rocks. And I started them in the middle with some little ones, and then went to the outside and made the large ones. Then that way I could kind of gauge going tapering down towards the center, large to small, to give it that depth. So just continue drawing until you get all your rocks done. These were the colors I used from Master's Touch acrylic paints. My black fell off the table, so I had black in the mix as well. So those were the five colors. And I took the gray, uh, you can see my plastic tray with the gray and just a little bit of water. Um, the water will help give you a finer line and help the process speed along a little bit. Your paint will be a little bit thinner. And it doesn't matter if you have lines in your in your rocks it just adds to the character of the rock so base them all in we have them based in so the next step is going to be taking some white paint and I will mix a little bit of that gray in there to light to to darken it up a little bit and put it on the tops of the stones what is going to be presenting as its very top surface portion and I use my finger if you don't want to use your finger you can probably use a q-tip or a paper towel around your finger but hey this is finger painting you can dab it on even like this next one you could have left it like that or I wanted a little more on there, so I put a little bit more and dabbed it up a little bit more. Now we need to do our low lights, and I have black and brown, and sometimes using a combination of both because rock, rocks are all different colors. There's no rules in this game here. You, you make them how you want them. No right or wrong way. Here again, I'm gonna tap, and I used more of a brown on that stone. I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna use black on this next one. And you're gonna use a technique called stippling or pouncing. Uh, basically what you're doing is just bringing that brush up and down and pouncing it and putting that color on and when I first take it around this stone, you can see it's pretty solid. All you need to do is don't put any more paint on, just use your brush and take the paint that's already there and move it towards the center. Just stipple it and move it towards the center. Yes, I did ruin four brushes uh, by doing this and you will. Sometimes if you, uh, maybe you might prefer a stiffer brush, but these were just some plain square brushes. So there we go. The next move, we're going to take a toothbrush. It is so fun. 
and we are going to spatter little dots, speckles on these rocks in white, black, brown. You just put a little bit of paint on that tip and you flick it with your finger and that will spray right down onto your painting. I will give you a close up on this so you can kind of see what happens. That's what you're gonna get. Don't worry about um, the, the speckles on the white or maybe your rocks are not quite lined up because we're gonna take care of that here in the next step, which is painting the black in between the rocks. You can shape your rocks up at that point and um, also if you have like a rock that's maybe sitting over the edge of another one, um, you can just make the one that you want to have further down in the dirt, make that corner just a little bit darker than the one next to it and it'll give that effect that it's sitting underneath the rock next to it. Here's all of our black. Now you can take this as far as you want. I did go back with some brown and went in between my white and my black. I did put other spots on. I put green moss around some of them at the top, at the very edge. Lines, cracks, speckles. Take it as far as you want. Now we need to cover it because we're going to take and I'm going to start to paint the table. And I used silk all-in-one mineral paint from Dixie Bell in the color Serenity. This was nice and creamy, beautiful. Didn't have to really do too much to it. And I needed to at least lay down one coat on everything because this had tight areas down there at the bottom and then all the little areas in between the grooves uh, would be difficult to get with that sprayer. So I used a zebra brush, a cylinder, for the spindles and all the uh, cracks and grooves and it always works really great for that type of hand brush painting. Time to spray it. So I have about a half a cup of this paint and I am going to go ahead and put almost another half a cup of water in it. Now that may sound like a lot or a bit crazy, but your weather conditions really can make a difference on how you want your paint to be. The, the paint that you have will make a difference in how much water you want to put in. But I basically had it about the consistency of thick milk, like chocolate milk. It was extremely hot out that day and I knew that my water was going to be drying on its way to the surface with this paint in it. Always strain your paint. Now I have all the right parts in. Two more coats. Get her done. Time to remove that paper and take the tape off the edge. Everything stayed in place. If I would have taken the time to paint the koi fish, sure it would have been, you know, really nice, but I wanted to get this table done, so I, I opted to use some koi fish transfers. And I knew that it would be a little bit bumpy in some spots because I painted with texture but it it really worked out fine because I am going to put a heavy poly coat over the top of this. I used flat for the whole table, polycrylic flat. And 
when I get into my problem here shortly, I used a clear satin just on the very top of the table when we get to that point. Here comes my poly. Oh, where have we seen them before? I just love them. They're so pretty. The lily pads with the lily flowers. Putting it on glass is so much more difficult. I, I don't know what the trick is. Now, protecting them, I opted to get a piece of plexiglass round to go over the top for protection until I can figure out what's the best way to, to protect them. Well, I had an unfortunate series of events that happened. And the last time you saw this, this was completely the same color. I live in Michigan and we get really weird weather here. And this looks so beautiful when I put it away the other evening. I had it sprayed, the, the finished poly on. It looked just gorgeous, glass gorgeous. But I let it sit outside too long and it started to get dampish out. And I picked it up and I brought it in. And in the morning, you could see um, little things happening on the surface which I'm sure was from the condensation of the water the other evening because uh, even though it's been getting really hot here, we, we carry the humidity here and it will uh, cause condensation when the temperatures drop in the evening. So lesson learned on that one and that's what I get for pushing it, trying to get you know more done when I have the time to do it. Um, uh, one step forward, two steps back, that's what I did, but it gave me another plan. I thought that maybe, because this is a solid oak table, I took it back down to the oak. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stain this. I'm gonna use some gel stain. I'm gonna use some Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain, Black Magic. So, I've been shaking it for a while, I have a sponge, so let's go ahead and give it a try and see what happens. I did not have any wood conditioner, so I had to um, go ahead and just put her on here raw. So I went very careful, one coat, tried to get it as even as I could, and it, it turned out pretty good. Back to spraying poly, this time satin. I wanted a little more shine. When I looked at the overall table, it just was so flat. And I really wanted to bring out all the grooves and the character in this piece. So I took some Dixie Belle Black Glaze. I did mix some of the stain in it so I could pull some of the color from that top down into down into all the decorative details on this table and I did one section at a time when I went to wipe that off I had to be extremely careful and watch for streaks because it was pretty runny and make sure that I did clear off all the areas with the paint and just leaving it inside the groove details.
here's what I started with. Pretty uh, deteriorated table, screaming, I want a koi fish pond in me, please, please, please. like and subscribe and thanks for watching so much fun thanks crafty creech for the challenge